Today in this video, we are going to be talking about the basic construction, terms, and components of a wire rope sling. My name is Nate Fisher with Mazella, here today to talk to you about the basic construction, terms, and components of a wire rope sling. In my hand, I have a basic wire rope sling that you may see out on your job site or in your facility. To start though, we got to talk about the construction of wire rope. This wire rope is made up of many wires that create a strand. That strand is then wrapped around a core to create the wire rope that you see here. The amount of wires in that strand and the amount of strands wrapped around that core will determine the flexibility of the wire rope and its abrasion resistance for its given application. Equally as important as the basic construction of the wire rope is going to be the diameter of it. That diameter is going to determine the working load limit of that sling. Furthermore, when identifying your wire rope sling or determining what one you would want, we have to talk about the length of the sling, the eye of the sling, and the eye construction of the sling. The length of the sling is going to be measured by the bearing point of one end to the bearing point of the other end. Also important in identifying a wire rope sling is going to be the eye size. If you have to put an eye over a sling hook or through a shackle, you're going to want to make sure that eye is big enough, so determining the proper eye size will be important too. In determining the eye construction, we're going to talk about two basic ones that you're going to see. The first one, and probably the most popular, is going to be a Flemish eye like I'm holding in my hand right here, where a rigger will actually break apart the wire rope in half and tie it back together or Flemish it back on itself and then we will swedge down this sleeve over the remaining part right here to create this eye. The other eye that you will see will be something that we call a hand tucked, where they'll actually break apart the individual strands and weave them back into the body of the sling to create that eye. In my experience, steel erectors have liked to use the hand tucked slings for ease of use. They slide under beams a whole lot easier and don't get caught like the knuckle of this swedge sleeve would. Also one thing that I would like to cover would be a thimble in the eye of a sling. And this thimble, whether it be as small as you see right here or bigger, will help keep the integrity and construction of that eye. With any sling we pick up, it has to have a tag. No tag, no use. On that tag, we have to have a couple of things. First of all, we have to have the manufacturer of that sling. Secondly, we have to have the diameter of that wire rope that it's made out of. Third, we have to have the rated load of at least one hitch type on that tag. Fourth, we have to have the number of legs on the sling, if more than one. Some other things that you may see on a sling tag will be the serial number from that manufacturer identifying that sling. And you may also see the vertical, choke, and basket hitch capacities. Not all sling tags will have these, but these will be excellent items to have for your people out in the field. So far in covering the basic construction of a wire rope sling, we've mostly been talking about a single part sling. But also what you might find out there, are there are multi-part slings. As an example of a multi-part sling, in my hand I'm holding a seven part sling. The advantages of these slings may be the greater flexibility, fatigue resistance, and the ergonomics of being able to rig it up much easier. In the previous examples, we've been talking about single leg slings. Now we're gonna talk about multi-leg slings, being two legs, three legs, or four legs of wire rope hanging off a master link. When determining a wire rope bridle, you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you properly choose the right master link or pair link as you see here up top, along with the proper size of it to be able to fit over your crane hook. Also at the bottom of your wire rope bridle, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you determine the proper components that you need down there. Another construction of a wire rope sling that you may see out there or need 
is what we call an endless wire rope sling or a grommet. The advantages or the reasons that you may use one of these slings is when dealing with a capacity where you cannot use an I and I sling. These endless or grommet slings can be used in applications where headroom is an issue because they can be made much smaller than an I and I sling. Now let's talk about some terms or nomenclature that you may see when purchasing a sling or reviewing an inspection report. The first two items that you're gonna see the most or that you need to identify best are the diameter of that sling and the length of that sling. Another part that you may see when purchasing a sling will be the construction or classification of the wire rope being used. This will be determined by 6x19, 6x25, or 6x37, typically. The other thing will be how many legs of that sling. Typically, you will see a single part or single leg. Otherwise, you will be identifying how many legs, two, three, or four, or more, of that sling. Lastly, we will talk about the components on that inspection report or order. Will it be getting hooks? Will it be getting a master ring with it? Will it be getting thimble eyes? Things of that nature. Also, one thing that I would like to cover in regards to seven part slings, a lot of times people are confused by the component rope used and the finished diameter. So anytime you're reviewing an inspection report or going to purchase one of these slings, you're always gonna to wanna to make sure that you're looking at that component rope and identifying that that will then determine the finished diameter of the sling. So make sure you know that component rope. One other key component of a wire rope sling is gonna be the eye size. Always make sure that you've got the proper eye size to be able to fit over whatever crane hook or shackle that you're gonna be utilizing for that pick. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video today. I hope it's given you a better understanding of the basics of wire rope and a wire rope sling. If you haven't yet, go ahead and share it with a coworker and hit that subscribe button because we got new videos coming out all the time. Thank you very much. If you need any help, go ahead and give us a call here at Mozilla. Have a good day.